Hello everybody. Uh, today I want to talk about an, another way of authenticating against the ServiceNow API. So there's some um, conventional ways that are well documented that you can find on the ServiceNow documentation, but there's one um, way that's not really well documented, but that's very interesting because of um, some benefits that I'll get into, and it's authenticating uh, via session tokens. So I'll get into that in this video. As with my other videos, I've written an accompanying blog post. Um, I'll link to that in the description below, and I'll use that as a guide during this video. So here's my blog post, authenticating against the ServiceNow API with session tokens. So as I said, there's a couple of different, way, different ways to authenticate. So the basic way that works without any configuration is basic authentication. So that means you can um, authenticate against the ServiceNow API with just a username and a password. Um, that works out of the box. You can set up more fancy authentication schemes like multi-factor authentication where you've got the user name, password, and also an MFA code with one of these generators or authenticators. And then there's also certificate-based authentication where both you and the server authenticate. Um, and then there's also basic authentication and you might have um, single sign-on set up for logging in through the web interface. And in those cases, your users might not have a password set on their account because they, they're not using their password. They're using the single sign-on feature. So they're using Microsoft as a, as a login provider. In those cases, they won't be able to uh, use basic authentication to log in or to authenticate against the REST API because they don't have a password set. I found out that if you just set a password on those accounts, they will be able to use the REST API and it will not sidestep the um, single sign-on for the web login. They won't be able to log in with username and password through the web, just through the REST API. So that might be useful in some cases. So let's talk about uh, authentication based on session tokens. So there are two session tokens involved. So, so what is a session token? A session token is an, um, is an identifier that the server uses to, to say, okay, this is a sort of a, a, a chunk of time uh, within which we um, trust that this user is who they say they are and they have the rights to view whatever resource they're requesting. So there's a Java session token, J session ID. This is typical for Java web applications, and since ServiceNow is is uh, running on Java, uh, it uses one of these. Um, and then there's the, also the CSFR token, which is um, so the J session ID is included in the cookie, and the CSFR token is sent as in, in the header. I'll get into why that is, but it's 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 basically to uh, to prevent a certain type of attack. So let's have a look first at this G session ID to get a feeling for how all of this works. So a great example of uh, using this session based uh, authentic session token based authentication is the uh, the script sync uh, and SN utils uh, applications by Arnaud Koy. So he wrote a um, extension called SN utils that you know all the ServiceNow developers that I know of use this, and they also use the SN Script Sync, which is the, the Visual Studio Code um, complementary part to it, which allows you to sync scripts from your instance to your, um, to your IDE. And I was wondering, how does this work? So let me show you how it works first. So you're here, I'm on my personal development instance and I click this sync button. I've got a script here and I click the sync button and then I go on the helper tab and it says open this in VS Code. I go to VS Code and here is the file. And then to show that it works both way, I can press, type a comment here, command us to save, go back here and we see that it showed up here. So there's a sync of these files. So how does this work? Well, this works using this um, using the REST API and by authenticating using the, the session token. Now, where is this session token? So if we were go if we were to go to the Chrome development tools, we go on network, it starts recording our HTTP requests automatically. If we just refresh this page, it's going to capture the first request to this page and it's going to capture all the cookies and all the headers that it sends as well. So while it loads, we can already look at what was sent. 
can we see here some cookies but these were the the re actual request header is down here cookie and here we have j session id f46 whatever so this is our j session id in the cookie um, now let me just show you there's a little trick if we copy this as a curl so that's just like a command line uh, HTTP request um, but copying it in that form it allows us to insert it into a tool like this which is uh, postman which is like an API testing tool and if we can import here and we're just going to import the curl and it just copies all the header information puts it inside the right um, inside the right fields and then just recreates the entire request and then we can create that request here and then you see it actually shows us a response which is probably the same thing as we're seeing there just because it's copied all the session ID etc but what now if you actually want to um, if you want to call the API so this will be an API call. And before I run this, let's have a look at the headers to show you like it's copied all this from what we recorded in Chrome. And in this cookie, we have got this J session ID. So that's why it was working before. But if we execute it here, it says user not authenticated. Why is it saying this? Well, it's saying this because this second uh, token is not included. And um, you can see why uh, it helps against certain types of attacks because if I had somehow was able to record this entire HTTP request, put it in here and just change this address and change it into a malicious request, let's say on a banking app, transfer money from, from you to me, then if we did not implement this second step, then that would just work. But now because I've changed the request, it's, it's complaining that um, it doesn't have enough um, auth information so it doesn't have that second token so that second token if we provide that that request would work we just need to find it so the G session ID we just went over um, just quickly there's another way uh, to, to 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 get it uh, this is a extension called cookie editor you've got all the variables in here and here you've got the J session ID as well so that's just a little little trick so how do you retrieve this second, the CSFR token? Well, there's three different ways. So this is a programmatic way. So let's try that. So if you've got access to a background script or something like that, so this is using SNUtils, just typed in command slash BG opens the background script, copy paste this, let's run this. This is undefined. It's only undefined in the global scope. I'm not sure why that is, but if we change the scope, it should work and here we've got the second token, the CSFR token. So if we include that in our request, it should work. Now, there's two other ways that I know of to get the same token, and they might be useful in different contexts. So if we go to inspect, we go to the browser console, and we type in window.gck, we've got the same token here. So that's another way to retrieve it. And then there's a third way, which is quite interesting, which is actually um, through this legacy sysprocessor record. And this is actually how SNUtils does it. Um, so there's this weird sysprocessor record, which you can find here. This is the endpoint in my case. SNDevStudio v1 get publish info. And if you enter that, then there's this information about publishing a custom application, something like that, but then also this CK key. So that's the third way of doing this, and that's how SNUtils does it. So once you have that key, you can copy it. You can go into the headers of your request, and you type in X user token. You put that in and send it and now you've got the request it's an XML if you want to change that you can also change that by saying 
don't accept all this. We just accept JSON. And then you've got a beautiful API authentication. How long this token stays valid, I'm not sure. I think it's probably something like 20 minutes or something like that. If you find out, please let me know. Um, and then that allows you, obviously this request is quite bloated because you've got all these headers which aren't really necessary. I've cleaned it up um, inside this blog post so you can get those, like this is really all that you need to make a request. I've got some other examples for some other frameworks and um, languages and some references of blog posts and other resources that were helpful. So with that, that concludes this video. Uh, it's a very cool trick to authenticate against the, the REST API. The cool part about it is really that you don't need to configure anything. This will work out of the box. All you need is to be able to, to log in. You don't even need access to a, a background script or anything like this. Um, and this is cool because maybe I know that I work with certain instances where I've got very basic permissions, but I want to automate some of the tasks that I do with those permissions. And then using this trick, I can automate those tasks uh, against that API. So if you enjoyed that, like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.